Good afternoon. <clears throat> In nine months' time, uh, we will hold the next NATO summit in the United Kingdom. There, we will chart the future of this alliance. Over the next two days, we will discuss um, how to shape the summit agenda so as to ensure the alliance remains fit, outward-looking, and ready to respond to the challenges the future will bring. We will meet with our ISAF partners and the Afghan foreign and interior ministers to discuss our current operation. And we look forward to hearing from them on preparations for timely, transparent, and inclusive elections next year. The recent Lloyd Dierga showed very clearly the progress Afghanistan is making. The Afghan forces did a remarkable job in ensuring that a gathering of such scale took place in a peaceful manner. And the participants delivered a clear message for continued partnership and cooperation. I welcome the lawyer Dierga's endorsement of the bilateral security agreement between the United States and Afghanistan. And I look forward to its timely signature. It will be important to put in place the necessary legal framework for the deployment of the NATO-led mission to train, advise and assist uh, the Afghan security forces after 2014. We will be working closely with the Afghan government in the weeks ahead on this issue. But it is clear that if there is no signature on the legal agreement, there can be no deployment and the planned assistance will be put at risk. It is my firm hope and intention, therefore, to continue our efforts to support Afghanistan once these agreements are concluded. We will also meet with Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, in the NATO-Russia Council. I expect we will agree on new areas of cooperation and initiate a pilot project on the destruction of old and dangerous ammunition in the Kaliningrad region uh, of Russia. We will also continue our discussions on the destructions of chemical weapons in Syria. Overall, I expect the meeting will send a strong political message of our shared commitment to our joint work. Finally, we will hold a session of the NATO Georgia Commission with Minister Panikitze to discuss how to further enhance our cooperation after successful election processes. I welcome Georgia's clear determination to pursue the path of reforms and its aspirations for Euro-Atlantic integration. And I welcome the fact that Georgia and Moldova initialed their association agreements with the European Union last week in Vilnius. NATO's position is very clear. It is every country's sovereign right to choose its own path and its own affiliations. Our goal is a Europe whole, free and at peace and sharing common values. And with that, I'm ready to take a couple of questions. Start with Al Jazeera over here. Uh, Secretary General Paul Brennan from Al Jazeera. A, a two-part question. First of all, what are your worst fears if the 2014 deployment to Afghanistan does not go ahead? And second of all, at this meeting over the next two days, what priority will be given to situation which is ongoing in Ukraine at the moment? First on uh, Afghanistan, let me stress um, that we are still prepared uh, to deploy a train advice assist mission to Afghanistan after 2014 if the Afghans so wish. At the end of the day, it's their decision. But we stand ready to help the Afghans uh, further develop their um, security forces. They are already quite capable, but we do believe that they need our continued assistance. 
And that's why uh, we are prepared uh, to deploy the so-called resolute support uh, mission to Afghanistan. Um, my concern is that if um, we are not able to deploy um, a training mission uh, to Afghanistan, um, it may have a negative impact on the security situation uh, in Afghanistan, and furthermore, it may also have a negative impact uh, on the provision of financial aid uh, to Afghanistan. Uh, we have pledged to contribute to financing the Afghan security forces. That assistance is put at risk if we can't deploy our own uh, training mission to Afghanistan. And furthermore, uh, the international community has pledged to uh, provide development assistance to Afghanistan that aid might also be put at risk. So a lot is at stake, and I'm hopeful uh, that the bilateral security agreement between Afghanistan and the United States will be signed and pave the way for a NATO legal framework so that we can deploy a training mission after 2014. As regards uh, Ukraine, um, first of all, I strongly condemn uh, the excessive uh, use of police force we have witnessed uh, in Kiev, I would expect uh, all NATO partners, including Ukraine, uh, to live up to fundamental democratic principles, including freedom of assembly and freedom of expression. Um, obviously, we fully respect Ukrainian decisions on their alliance affiliations and to which organizations they want to belong or with which organizations they want to cooperate. But I would expect such decision-making processes to be truly democratic. German press agency. Yes, it's uh, detabling with DPA, the German press agency. Secretary General, could you elaborate on what you mean by timely signature? Is that the end of this year? And the second question, tonight you're talking about the open door policy, meaning uh, the open door for possible new members. Uh, do you think, uh, honestly think, that any of these four countries uh, you're basically talking about is uh, in any way close to any membership or membership action plan or whatsoever with NATO? Or isn't there a large consensus that they are not? First, on um, timelines as regards the signature uh, of the legal framework for our possible continued presence uh, in Afghanistan, I would be reluctant to, to uh, set exact dates, but I have to remind everybody um, that there are certain um, realities on the ground, uh, including uh, planning, including budgetary and parliamentary procedures in a potential troop contributing uh, uh, countries, um, and those facts on the ground uh, make it necessary uh, to sign uh, that legal framework um, very soon. Um, that was also the clear message from the lawyer Diega, and I hope uh, President Karzai will listen to that clear message from uh, the lawyer Diega. As regards our open door policy, uh, it's much too early uh, to go into details. Uh, we have uh, still uh, nine months to go before uh, the summit. Anyway, uh, I'm sure that the summit will reiterate that our door remains open. One very last question, the center Reuters. Uh, Houston, I have Reuters. I have a question on, on KFOR um, about the decision of, um, uh, the Fr of France to um, withdraw its troops from next year from KFOR and Kosovo. Was that going to be a problem for NATO, or will you be able to find troops elsewhere to fill in the gaps? Um, I feel confident uh, that we will be uh, able to to fill the gaps, so to speak. Um, we all know that uh, France uh, has a lot of engagement in other uh, theaters, and uh, France um, has contributed to our K4 mission very significantly uh, during uh, many years. So I think based on the principle of solidarity uh, that we will be able to, 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 fill, um, to fill the gap. There is a clear political commitment to maintaining a troop presence in Kosovo sufficient to ensure 
a proper implementation of the political agreement between Belgrade and Pristina. Many thanks.